Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains. That's in Missouri, in the USA. Today, we've got a couple of TAC-3 joysticks, and I've already refurbished one, but we'll do the other one in this video here so we can have a peek inside and see how they compare to the famous TAC-2. Well, let's jump right in. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They do circuit boards of all sizes, small circuit boards, medium circuit boards. They can even assemble them for you. So head on over to PCBWay and get your free instant quote. Now they're offering an upgrade from TG130 to TG150 temperature rating for free. This kind of side by side here will give you a good idea of how well it did clean up. This is the refurbished one and this is what they both originally look like. Some grime stuck down in the, the corners of things and kind of it's pretty creaky in operation even after refurbishment. It's just about as bad. Now taking one of these to bits it's not too hard to get it apart but not all the wires plug in. Most of them don't. You've got to desolder them, which is a little bit of a pain. Kind of get an idea of the quality of construction by the shavings that come out with the screw. By the way, a little tip here. Screws for plastic have a blunt or slightly tapered point. Sometimes they're self they have a little self-tapping bit like that on the end. Pointy screws are sheet metal screws. They are not for plastic. Most of the time they'll wind up busting the plastic. And now we can kind of separate this, but you see we've got wires holding things together. But if you rotate this part like that, you can slide that down there. And then you're left with this mess. And only these two wires, this black and orangey brown, unplug from the switchboard here. And everything else you have to desolder. So I made a little map here that tells me where everything goes. And I originally marked which side was up on this switch block here. Once I got it apart, I realized that it's rather symmetric. And you can kind of tell which end is up anyhow because this little red wire is the only one that solders to one of these little tabs that's kind of on this angle piece here. So I won't mark this one since I figured all that out now. And we just need to go around and remove all these wires. And as I'm going, I'm making sure that the color code on this one matches the color code on the other one. And it does. And these two wires are on these big ground planes, so they take a little time to get hot enough to desolder. These are from the switch on the handle. All three switches are live at the same time and what I found using this is you're trying to hold on and no matter if you're right-handed or left-handed you might accidentally bump the switch there which is kind of a pain. Okay. So now we get these two that slip off here like that. Okay, so now we've got this base disconnected from everything else. So we can wash this guy now and wash the cord. And we've got all this stuff disconnected. Now, we'll take this handle off here. There's two different types of screws here. This bottom screw, as I recall, is, you know, that's a machine screw. It's got threads. And this one may be a machine screw, too. You know, this one is. These are the same length and pitch of screw. Got a little lock washer on there, and this one is a 
plastic screw. And be careful here. Um, you kind of wiggle that plastic off of this part of the stick that pokes up there. And carefully slide out the switch and the button. And it's got a little spring on it that goes like that. They use the same switch here as I use here. Get all that stuff out of there now so we can wash this part too. And now take out these four screws that hold this switch block in here. There, there's three. The fourth one comes from the bottom cover screw. So these three are the same. Okay, now we, the wires will slip through like that. And we kind of get an idea of the workings of the joystick here. It has a big rubber centering bushing. Uh, like the, the Wiko command controls have the same thing, and that works out pretty well. The switches in this part are not so great. Those we'll see in a minute. Let me get that bushing off of there too. That goes in there like that. That's what pushes on the switches. We'll take out these four screws, which are the same as the three that held the switch block in there. That's convenient. There we go. Now we can pull the handle and the switch out of this guy. There's not anything you really need to do to this. Um, on the Wicos, the centering bushing can wear out. It was pretty good on both of these. So I'll set all these screws to the side. And oh, we might as well go ahead and take out these two screws here that hold this circuit board in. This is kind of spring loaded. These screws are the same as the other ones inside here. I like it when the manufacturer thinks ahead and makes all the fasteners the same. It makes things a lot easier. So there's the switch here. Big spring. It's got this little bar that connects both of the buttons to the switch. See the pointy part on the bar goes up. Take the buttons out of there. And more plastic shavings. Okay, but this part's not too bad a shape, it's just dirty. So we'll clean all that up with the rest of the plastic bits. Now, this is the switch block. This is as it would be if it was installed. Um, actually, it would be like this with this one up in this corner like that. At any rate, the, the protruding end, the bottom end of the stick goes into this bushing, which slides around in here and presses the switches. Now, luckily, this thing comes apart and all the pieces in it are the same. Okay. Yeah. On well, the first one I took apart, all four of these little nubs here were broken. Um, this one has two of them broken. You can see uh, just there. That one's kind of leaning. That one's missing. So hopefully we can find it in here. And in the first one I took apart, a few of these pieces here were broken. You can see right there, you see how you see a, a little black thing there, but not on there. That is our missing little nub, which goes right there. And this piece is really floppy. That's broken. These other three seem to be solid. Okay. So this one's in a little better shape than the first one I picked. But all of these switch elements are the same as you go around, which is nice. Um, what I did was take one section apart at a time and clean it and grease it and put it back in. Uh, that way it's easier not to get things mixed up because you always have something to look at. Uh, for this piece that is broken right here, we'll have to clean that really good with some alcohol to get rid of all the old grease. Um, originally I tried some of the DevCon plastic epoxy I used for the case saver kits and whatnot, 
and that did hold and then I tried super glue and that did a fine job and it did a fine job on these little nubs on this part too so um, what I will do is go get the plastic case parts soaking in a little tub of hot soapy water and get my jug of grease and some q-tips and we'll get this clean and greased up i think the first thing we'll tackle is getting these broken bits glued back on this plate got a little alcohol on this q-tip here i'm going to swab this area oh yeah Okay, the danger with these little pieces is flinging them across the room. Okay, it's going to be hard to see, but it's kind of oblong this way, and it's got a point there. And that kind of matches up with this side. Get one more. Dab of glue on there. That was actually a little too much glue. Hook him into place. No. Just use this screwdriver. Ah, darn. And don't do that. I was trying to get it seated down in that hole. And that's what you don't want to happen is to fling the part across the room. Okay, there we go. Well, that was easy. I'll give that a few minutes to set up and then we'll break this one the rest of the way off of there and glue him on. So one thing to note is that this piece, which has a square or l-shaped or i guess z-shaped bend in it goes under this piece which just has a little hooky do on it so what i was doing is pulling these out like this giving everything a good clean with some alcohol and we don't want to forget this part too that guy's pretty grungy this sets like this and this plastic bushing sets in here and i've noticed these tend to get bent up like this so just giving them a little bit of a twist to get them back into shape I've got a little lithium grease here. Put some on both sides there. A little bit at the pivot. You can use silicon grease for this too. The only silicon grease I had was uh, like the thick stuff used for automobile ignitions, which is too viscous for this type of job. Okay, this guy sits like this. I'm going to put a little right there where that contact is. It'll still make electrical contact. No worries. There we go. This guy goes like this. Just a little bit there, and on the back there where that peg touches, which is right there, I think. Slips under that one. And over that one like that. Okay, some grease on this guy. Okay. 
Now we see where this bushing goes right here in the middle. So this piece is acting like the contact in the spring. And this piece is transferring the force from this plastic bushing into here. And those two little plastic pieces that broke off keep this peg in place. Okay, now we just need to go around and do the other three. And when we get to this broken one on the side, we've got to clean it really good and glue it back together. So I'll stop and film again when I get to there. Okay, we've gotten around to the one with the broken thing here. And I've taken all the, the little bits out and I've cleaned them up, but I've not put any of them in yet. And I took several Q-tips with some alcohol and cleaned really, really good around here. Uh, to get as much off there before I finish separating these parts. Then we're going to notice that the slanted part goes that way. So I'm going to finish breaking that off of there. And of course, you see how shiny this is? This has all that grease all under it. So no matter how good I cleaned up before breaking that the rest of the way off there, We've got to get the rest of this grease off of here or our super glue will not do anything. Good way to tell if you've got it clean enough. It's just keep going till your Q-tip comes back unstained. Okay, by the way, I'm using this Scotch Weld SF20. Um, this works really good and I have it. Um, this is a really thin super glue. It's designed for seeping into cracks. So I probably wouldn't choose this if I, you know, had multiple types on hand. But I do have it and it actually works great for this application. I will set that right down on there. I'm just going to hold that with my thumb for a few seconds. Now while the super glue sets up pretty fast, it doesn't reach its full strength for about 24 hours. So I will let this set at least for several hours before I grease everything and put it back together. You know, I've got other stuff I can work on. You know, for instance, I could work on my taxes. That's always fun. Um, and it's not gonna hurt anything just to leave this sitting like this. And then we'll come back a little later and Put it the rest of the way together. Well, while we're going to all this trouble, we might as well fix up these little red dots around here. Now, this is just some acrylic craft paint, cardinal red. Um, it's not the best stuff for this job, but it has the advantage that if I goof up and make a mess, I can clean it up with some water. And since I'll probably not really play that much with these, it'll work just fine. Trick is just to get just enough of a dab on there. Apply it fairly evenly and then leave it alone. Get you another little dab. If you try to smoosh it around too much and make it perfect, you'll just wind up drying the paint out and it makes it worse. I've got a bigger dab this time, so I'm doing multiple little spots on here. Okay, that looks really good. I don't know how well that's showing through on the video. Maybe I can zoom in a bit here. Yeah, but they're not all worn off now. It'll look a little better sitting on the shelf. And that was quick and easy to do. Well, I did this before I went to work this morning. So it'll have all day to dry, and when I come home tonight, we can finish the assembly and test it out a bit. Well, this glue has actually had a couple days to cure. Been busy doing other things, but now we will get it put back together all the way. I guess the first thing we can do Let's apply our grease on those parts. I guess there doesn't need to be any there, does there? Right there. 
Okay. So when this is pushed, this piece is acting as a spring return and this is our outside contact. And these pieces with these little things sticking out the sides are actually the common. All right. Well, that was on that side. And the reason I know that is because this was the contact that had the common solder to it. And it was this direction. And this was this direction. It doesn't really matter, though. That sits on there like that. We also have our bushing, which we can put in there either before or after the cover. This bushing sits in here like this, and it's what pushes the switch. This bottom part of the joystick stem sits in here. Now the reason these guys break is because they wind up being a hard stop. The switch does. So as this rotates, it moves this. And there's nothing to stop the stick except when it does that. So when somebody gets really excited and jerks that stick over, this piece of plastic is taking all that force. Now if they had made some type of mechanical stop, to the movement up in this area where there's already a lot of plastic I want to help pre prevented that you know these from breaking and the same thing as what bends these contacts right here so you know what goes wrong if it doesn't stop when the switch is hit okay I went ahead and greased up that bushing and we'll slip this cover back on there like so, and it's not wanting to go. Well, I wound up gluing both of these little nubs back on this piece, and I launched both of them across the room a few times and miraculously found them. And hopefully they're lined up so they'll work because I've lost enthusiasm for getting them where they should be. Um, if you're ever working on something like this and you're missing a part like that, Sometimes you can drill a hole through the plate. If there's room on this side, maybe you could uh, thread a little nylon screw through there. That would work. If you've got some plastic rod that's the same diameter, you can glue that into the hole. This is about two millimeters. Um, you know, things like that. You can get creative. And there we go. Okay, that popped right in there. That's good news. Okay. Now, I've got all this greased up already. Can you hear all that creaky sound? Yeah, it's not the greatest joystick in the world. Oh, that was a very big pop there. And I died. So what's my take on the Suncom TAC-3? Well, 
with the TAC-2, Suncom really hit a grand slam. You know, that thing has a cult following. Uh, with the TAC-3, there's no joy in Stickville. The mighty Suncom has struck out. Uh, this isn't a very good joystick. It's nice looking. Uh, these cleaned up well after all these years. It's really creaky. It's imprecise. Um, it was never made to last any period of time. It's just not very satisfying, you know, compared to, say, a Wiko command control or something like that. It's just not that wonderful. But I'm glad I've got a pair of these, but I'm also glad I did not send these to my nephew because these wouldn't have lasted in any time at all. And they're kind of a pain in the butt to work on with that little box there that keeps falling apart. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions or comments, well, just leave them in that comment section down there below. I would love to hear from you. And thanks to everyone who helps support the Hey Burt channel through Patreon and other means. It is greatly appreciated. You can look down there in the description for a little more information on that if you're interested in becoming a supporter. Well, until next time, bye.